Hey everybody, Vivian here. I just wanted to share with you a garden journal that I made. The tutorial aired on the Paper House Magazine website a few weeks ago and I just wanted to share with my audience here. So, so because the photos for this uh, garden journal were so colorful and spectacular, I wanted to keep the color palette for my cover really simple and muted. This is a Prima tag and a heart that I die cut from um, corrugate using a mini hearts die from Sizzix. Leaves from the walks that we take with our dogs and some feathers that have a wonderful soft texture that I've also found on our walks. A mother of pearl button is just from my stash. It's got a lovely sheen. And those letters were die cut from the chip block die from Sizzix using the DCWV's trade wind stack, which I've been using a lot of recently. And uh, before I forget, the ribbon is a mesh from Really Reasonable Ribbon. Uh, my covers, when it's possible, I try to recycle or upcycle materials that would otherwise go in the garbage. So I'm using a cereal box that I cut in half, and I cut in half again. And then I have this uh, Zutter corner rounder uh, that I used on the corners of this cover. Um, I also sanded the edges to make them somewhat smoother and um, I put gesso on the brown side um, and I just very quickly um, covered the surface using a foam brush and gesso that I had poured, just a little bit that I had poured into the cap of my, my bottle. I'm doing this because I'm preparing my surface for a technique that I call a faux granite technique. I've made a couple of videos on this technique before, uh, but basically we need to do this to prepare our surface so that the media that we apply later will show up nicely. I'm also going to apply gesso to uh, a heart that I cut out of corrugate packaging. Um, so I'm upcycling as much as possible. I had also ripped off some of the edges to just play up the texture as much as possible. I really love corrug adding corrugate to my projects. Um, and I used my Sizzix Mini Hearts die to cut that out. Once the gesso has dried, um, I'm going to adhere this piece of natural fiber paper. I believe it's mulberry paper. Um, I picked this up at my local art supply store. I haven't really seen it at the major craft stores, but if you go to an art supply store, they have a whole variety of different types of natural papers. And this one has some really subtle little holes in it, and the fibers show up really nicely when you um, put watercolor on it, which is what we're going to use today. Um, I'm using matte medium to adhere this paper to my cover. What I really like about the matte medium and why I think it's a, a good investment is that it gets um, my natural papers to stick to whatever surface I'm using. I use this type of paper in watercolor painting as well when I want to add some texture. Um, it gets that paper to stick down, but it also continues to allow applications of paint to absorb into the fibers, which is why I don't use other products to adhere that paper down, because um, I, I don't want to lose that absorbency. And you're going to do the same thing with your back cover. And I'm, I'm not going to show you what I did because it'll just be redundant. So I'm going to skip forward here. This is where things get really fun, in my opinion. Um, we're going, now that it's dry, we're going to, that's a little bucket of water. We're going to start applying some dilute watercolor. There's my watercolor palette. And we're going to stick with Hooker Green. I like Hooker Green because it's rather muted um, of the green colors that I have. But my love of this technique is that it's rather spontaneous. Um, you allow the colors to mix on your paper and sort of let nature create a beautiful project for you um, where you don't have to focus so much on 
certain agonizing compositions. Um, so um, the thing about watercolor to remember is that um, it goes on a certain color, but it's always going to dry about two shades lighter. So as you play around with it, you'll start learning um, how much you need to apply, how concentrated in order to get the desired effect. Here I'm starting really light, and then I'm going darker. And you'll start to see, I'm just lightly touching on the raised parts where the fibers are a little bit thicker. Um, as you'll see, um, the colors will start to just move along all those little veins of the mulberry paper. Um, and rather than mix the colors in your palette, after I apply the green, I'll go ahead and apply a um, magenta. Um, these two colors I really like to use together because they are somewhat complementary. See how it just sort of mixes on its own? Um, it's a lot of fun. And um, because they are complementary, they're sort of going to help. The red's going to help the green pop, and the green's going to help the red pop. What I found with this paper, which has the small circular modeling that happens because of the fibers, um, was that the effect is very subtle, um, but still definitely lends a natural effect to your project. Now I'm going in with some more concentrated applications of the watercolor paint. Um, but I'm really being somewhat sloppy with it. And um, as you can see, I just threw down some splatters of water. And um, as they start to migrate on the paper, um, that also um, creates your effect for you and really um, makes your job as a crafter much easier because you sort of just allow nature to do what it's going to do. I think it also requires you to be um, loose and to let go a little bit in your crafting. Um, and that's something that I'm striving for in the projects that I make. It's just to be looser, more spontaneous, um, play around, and see what happens. So this technique is great for that. Um, so as you can see here, this, this is what happened with the watercolor. I'm using my new Heidi Swap Color Shine in Chartreuse. And my cover is still wet. Um, because it's wet, those little splatters are going to move a little bit. Um, and it's going to look like you have little flecks of mica in your granite. Um, that were always there and not applied on top. And I'm doing that on um, my other cover. This spritz, um, I just received it a couple of days ago. I'm really pleased it's got a little ball inside that shakes. So you can shake it. Um, and so far, it hasn't clogged on me. And the amount of um, shimmer is good. It's like a nice, intense amount of shimmer. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I think if you were going for um, a more pronounced splatter, um, you would just do this when it was dry. OK. So now everything's dry. And it's kind of hard to see in the video, but it has a really subtle shimmer that I just really love. And um, those fibers have created a feeling that this is actually rock. On this piece, that shimmer is showing up um, more clearly. And um, at this point, because these colors, even though there is that magenta in there, um, feel a little bit, to me, on the cool side, I'm going to add a little bit of acrylic paint. This is 
um, folk art acrylic paint I picked up at my local craft store. The color is tapioca. I'm just going to add that in a few select places. And what I did that seems to work really well is lay in a light coating of color with one foam brush and then um, take a clean dry brush, a separate clean dry brush, to uh, blend the color in just um, a little bit better. While I have a moment, um, I'm just going to tell you uh, some of the other things that I used in this project. Once this is dry, um, I'm going to start applying my embellishments. And um, the title was cut out using a Sizzix Alpha die called um, Chip Block. And um, I actually went over in a sort of rough way um, on top of the letters. The, the paper is from DCWV's uh, Trade Winds stack, which I'm kind of really in love with right now. And um, it's sort of a, a canvas sheet in that stack. Um, I went over it with some of that tapioca color, um, making sure to uh, leave some of that paper showing through. The wood piece is from Prima, and it says delightful because that is how my garden makes me feel. Um, and I um, threaded through that some natural ribbon that I had cut down the middle um, from really reasonable ribbon. Um, the leaf that you just saw is um, from a tree that grows locally. Um, I see it every day when I walk my dogs. And um, I think I, I mentioned before, uh, I sometimes like squat down in the grass and collect the feathers from the ducks and the geese that um, live at the pond where we walk our dogs. So there are all these elements in the project that have everything to do with our home here. And so I thought that was appropriate. Um, the heart was cut out with the Sizzix Mini Hearts die from the corrugate. And I actually covered that heart with just a little bit of the tapioca color as well to warm it up a little bit. Um, and I'm not too worried about the leaf um, falling apart. This is a very dry leaf, um, even when you pluck it fresh off the tree. Um, I have another video that shows how you can sort of gild them and preserve them and make them just a little bit more flexible using some heat embossing. Um, but I didn't do that here because that heart on top is sort of going to provide a barrier between the leaf and the environment. Um, and I just nestled that pearlized button from my stash behind the heart. I'm going to um, adhere those letters with um, Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And um, Il Giardino means the garden in Italian, and um, I, I'm a big Italophile. And um, the reason I used Italian is because I think that language is far more beautiful than English. Um, so that's why. Um, and I'm just putting a little bit more tapioca with my finger. Um, on top of these letters to make them pop a little bit more. These are just like the final touches. Um, I'm pulling out some of those individual fibers um, to create a, a, more, a rougher, rustic feel. Um, I'm distressing the edges um, using a Tim Holtz distress tool. And I'm going to do some ripping as well to create a very variegated edge. So that's basically the cover. Um, I cut out some papers, mostly from Prima's Fairy Bell um, collection, and papers that really didn't have um, where the pattern wasn't the star. Um, uh, just some sort of subtle background papers. Um, and I'm thinking, um, and I bound it with my Zetterbind it all. 
I'm thinking that um, if I'm able to collect some seeds from some of these plants, I can put them in little glassine envelopes inside each page because they're sort of folded um, in a very basic way. And I'll, I'll show you that at the end. Um, this is, from, I believe, from an older Prima stack called Madeline. Um, and I liked it for this project because it's also pretty muted. And um, it's got some typography, which um, is kind of hot right now. Um, and I'm at this point, because I'm not going to be doing anything to the surface other than adhering it, I'm using some glossy Mod Podge um, to get that to stick down to my paper. Um, and I sort of am able to kill two birds with one stone here, because if I had used that side on the front cover, I would have had to gesso it several times. Um, but here I'm just able to cover it up really quickly with um, a pretty piece of patterned paper. And you're going to do that for the front and the back. And the height of this um, mini album is about four inches. So I was able to just shove that into my zetter um, without any real settings and eyeball the center and just punch the holes. So as this video comes to an end, um, I'm going to show you some uh, shots of the album that I took. It's really actually a very basic album. Um, the, here you can see uh, the final project with the technique that was what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I actually ended up adding one more piece, which is a small butterfly that I cut out using a, a butterfly Sizzix movers and shapers die, um, using a chipboard that I got from a cereal box. Um, I gessoed that and um, spritzed a lot of that chartreuse um, color shine spray on it. And um, like I mentioned before, um, this album houses photos of beautiful plants that have been so resilient and have stood up to the extreme temperatures we have in Las Vegas. I was so pleased. This one just went nuts all summer long. Um, my handwriting is kind of messy, but I'm going to journal anyway and share it with you guys on all my projects. This variety is called Cappuccino, and this is um, a, a zinnia called Queen Red Lime. And that's just otherworldly to me. I couldn't believe how beautiful those are. Um, so I'll put some uh, pictures of the photos and journaling on my blog. Um, that is at contadinak.wordpress.com. Um, so you can, if you're interested, you can see that. This is what I would promised you I'd share with you. Um, it's just another project I did um, using the same technique. And as you can see, the fibers are thicker, um, and they're not in that mottled, rounded um, shape. So it looks a little bit different. I actually have another video that I'm going to post really soon. I'm going to post it Sunday, October 21st. Um, and it's going to share some uh, dry embossing techniques using some cool new um, embossing folders um, to create some interesting Halloween effects. Um, I have always more goodies for you at my blog, so if you haven't been there yet, please come visit me, contadinak.wordpress.com. And um, from there, you can also like my pub public Facebook page. I've got a new one. And um, I should have a lot more goodies to share with you soon. There's some really great collaborations coming up with some of my favorite companies. So I can't wait to share that with you. Thanks so much for watching.